Oh. <laughs> Little. <laughs> Sound check. G'day and welcome to another vocal analysis here at Voice Essentials. My name is Dr. Dan and today, once again, I mean, come on, once again, we're going to have a listen to Morissette. And uh, this this performance, I, I, as you know, I always listen to the performances ahead so that I can give an in-depth analysis, not just a pure reaction. But this performance is, I really love it. It's so... It's very contained. It's a, quite a short rendition of Run To You, the classic hit by Whitney Houston. I mean, it's not an easy song to sing. Morissette doesn't tend to pick easy songs to sing. That's why we love her, because she, <laughs> nine times out of, well, more than nine times out of ten, she nails it, and this performance is no exception. I'm going to need your help. If you know where this performance is from, it was the, the video we're watching was uploaded to YouTube about five years ago. I, th I think it's a competition, a bit like The Voice where they do the battles because there's another fellow here who I think sings after Morissette. And <laughs> imagine having to step up and sing after Morissette. His name is Jed. We never hear him sing. But I'd be really keen for you to let me know what is the show, who is, if it is a competition, who wins between the two of them? Um, quite frankly, I mean, we I don't get to hear Jed sing, so I don't know how he goes. But man, Morissette nails this. And with all the beautiful little inflections that she uses, we're going to dive straight in because... This is one of her stronger live belt pieces. Let's let's have a listen. Oh, I just noticed I just noticed she's already so she's starting with one in-ear monitor out. I hadn't noticed that. Can you see there? Just over her left shoulder is her in-ear bud. So from the get-go, she's not been happy. What's interesting is she hasn't hung it over the back so to, uh, it's to hide the fact that she doesn't want that in-ear monitor in. It's not an uncommon thing. In -ear, to get in-ear monitoring right, and I've worked with in-ears for many, many, many years, it is so hard to get a good in-ear monitor mix. Um, and, and evidently... For whatever reason, she she has wanted to balance what she's doing, what she can hear herself doing acoustically with what she's hearing now through her, I would dare say, her right in-ear monitor. Uh, let's continue. I know that's when you look at me There's so much that you just don't see. I love the way she starts there. Have a listen to just how she eases in. With big songs like Run To You, and I've, I've mentioned this many times on, on my instructional videos and on my reaction videos, it's so important when you're doing big singing, like big songs, like a Run To You, that you start at the right place. If you start too big, at the very beginning, you're going to get too big at the climax. And so you, you know, which is typically around the bridge. So you want to make sure you really, you know, keep your energy in check. And, you know, there, there will be adrenaline here. There will be nerves. She's human. And so you've got to keep that adrenaline in check and really manage it so that you don't give too much too soon. When you look at me, so much. That you just don't see But if You would only take the time I know in my heart you'd find Hmm, oh. that little, little Morris What I refer to as the Morrisette squeak And I, I do know she, you know, as I said This was uploaded to, video, to, to YouTube five at least five years ago so 
this performance may have even been, in fact, I'm just looking, it's, it, I think it was 2018 that this performance was done. I do know that in recent years, she has been a bit more, a bit more, dare I say, mature and, and careful in, in where and how much she uses these little, um, little inflections because from a vocal health stand, uh, standpoint, these can really fatigue the voice quite heavily. They, they, can be, um, they can be a danger to the voice. They can wear and tear at the voice um, and if overdone. And what happens with audiences? Audiences want to hear it because it sounds awesome. And so the, the performer is then tempted to start using them more and when they use them more, that fatigues the voice at an increased level and it creates a bit of an issue. But I do know that from some of the comments you've left in my reaction videos about Morissette that she has been, you know, instructed by a, a laryngologist to, to back off in the amount of use that she does there because with those little squeaks, uh, because we want her around for a long time vocally, don't we? We really, really do. So let's just take it back and have a listen to, you know, that it is, it does sound awesome. Yeah, it's aesthetic over function here. Only take the time I know in my heart of you. That's one of the hard parts about a lot of Whitney Houston stuff is, yeah, it goes big. It certainly goes big. But, but also she, she often deep, dips down into really low notes. And to have the voice travel through and not bottom out and lose phonation with that uh, can be quite difficult and Morissette nails it. Have a listen to how she moves through those bottom notes. She doesn't, the very clever thing here is she's not burr, bottoming out. She's not dropping the larynx to kind of uh, get down. She moves through the phrase, she, which means that the voice can glide through those lower notes and keep the oscillation of the vocal folds going. Very clever singing. Oh, I feel so alone. Right. Can I? Well, let's go back. I just want to have a listen there. There's just, and this is, I think this is awesome. The the pitch. You tell me what you hear. Just just ever so slightly under the note it it reminds us this is live and and i love that i love that this you know this the slightest of inaccuracy has not been doctored oh, just it's so minor but it's there would you hold me Just that little bit of growl and just oh just the the the, the coloring the nuance is is so top end like it's so top shelf just a further comment to the pitch the the reason it stands out to me is because her pitch accuracy is stellar like it's so on point and so if you hear if for, for me, if I hear even just the slightest pitch movement, it stands out because it's so not normal for Morissette to, to be under. In, and I think this pitching issue was tonal, not necessarily vocal fold frequency, but just the way that the, the vowel got shaped. It just pulled the note um, off center. <laughs> This growl again. 
Not overdone. Never overdone. Oh. <laughs> Little. <laughs> oh, I do love them. I mean, this is the thing, right? Is we, as much as I know that they can create some challenges over time to the voice, <laughs> aesthetically, I can't get away from the fact that they sound amazing. the way she prepped for that have a watch of the way she preps through her midriff and allows the air to come in because these are long phrases right so she's got to prepare for them and if the the temptation as singers for long phrases is to breathe really high and so we in not only do does that cause us to have quite a a shallow breath and as a result not a lot of air but it also will cause the voice to constrict the, the laryngeal muscles to kind of implode on themselves she doesn't do that she actually manages her tension through good breath management and uh and through good release have a watch see she didn't grab at it doesn't quite nail the the run from a pitch perfect point of view let's have a listen again yeah hear that she goes a bit sharp on that one not quite I love the conviction. And that's what was one of the big standout features of Whitney Houston was her the way she sang had such conviction. It's not it's not just about, you know, hitting all the right notes and doing all the fancy runs and putting all the <laughs> wonderful inflections in. That all needs to be there if you're going to be representing a song like Run to Run to You in a true fashion. But it's got to have the conviction and have a look at this i mean morissette is absolutely 110 percent convicted to what she's actually you know committed i should say is it convicted or committed it's both uh she is right in the slot with this song Goes light on it. Awesome. Nice use of range. Oh, yeah. It sounds awesome. It just sounds awesome. Have a listen again. so dangerous but it sounds awesome mm, beautiful movement there at the end just have a listen 
And I think this is more driven by the airs, just not quite there to, to keep the note up. Have a listen. Just drops there, just, just after the piano comes in. Have a listen again. Just under. Not a flawless, you know, robot um, performance, but still, <laughs> you know, if you didn't have someone like me pointing out these little inaccuracies, and, and I think they are little, they're not, you know, then you, th that, would, that would pass as amazing because it is amazing. But I think it's, it's so helpful for us mere mortals to be able to watch someone as amazing as Morissette singing live and to recognize it it's, has a level of imperfection. That's actually good. It's not bad. I know some of you, you know, those of you who are very passionate Morissette fans, you, you may not like the, the idea of having those things pointed out, but that's, I, in my mind, as a professional singing teacher, it actually doesn't detract from her. It only gives me greater levels of respect for her capacity for live vocal performance because it's, it's, it's great singing. <laughs> it really is. And... And I, we cannot underestimate how challenging that particular piece is, not just to record it, but to do it live is awesome. Again, leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Um, you may categorically disagree with me, and I welcome your comments as long as they're, they're, they're offered in a respectful manner. Um, and, uh, and let me know what, what you're hearing. Uh, and also, again, let me know about the history of the performance because I'd like to learn more. How did Jed go? Um, it would be, I would love to know um, because obviously if he's being put up against someone like Morissette, he must be pretty darn good. Uh, I very much look forward to seeing you in the next vocal analysis videos, which we do every week. So make sure you subscribe and uh, I'd love to see you in the next one. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well.